You're watching Reality Check where every night we take a big claim and then we take it apart with facts to essentially establish is it fact or fiction. Tonight, farm loan waivers, are they the answer to rural distress or simply a politically expedient weapon that does not in the long run help farmers? This question has become all the more pressing after farmers from drought hit Tamil Nadu who've been camping in Delhi demanding central assistance staged a dramatic naked protest outside the Prime Minister's office. This debate also found echoes in Parliament today, where the question of loan waivers come up. Now, this comes hard on the heels of Uttar Pradesh, which waived loan to small and marginal farmers, triggering demands from other states like Maharashtra, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh and Punjab. But does it make sense to waive loans? Or is that an easy way out for politicians and policymakers to neglect the deeper symptoms that create agricultural indebtedness. All right, uh, a good point of reference is the farm waiver extended by the UPA in 2008 when it waived off 70,000 crore rupees of debt of about four crore farmers. That move may have been one of the factors which won them an election in 2009, but it came in for criticism from a number of different sources. The World Bank had this to say. It said that the loan waiver scheme had no effect on productivity, wages or consumption, but led to an increase in defaults amongst borrowers that were previously in good standing. ICRIA said that the generalized debt relief discourages prompt repayment in the future in the expectation that there may be more such waivers in the pipeline. Perhaps that's why, sensing a return of this virus of loan waivers, the normally reticent RBI governor has been compelled to speak up, saying, in quotes, waivers undermine credit culture, an honest credit culture. It leads to crowding out of private borrowers as high government borrowing tends to impose an increase in cost of borrowing on others. In fact, the SBI chief's graphic is up there as well, where she said credit discipline breaks when you waive off farm loans. Moreover, more than one commentator has pointed out that farm loan waivers may not benefit the most needy. For instance, only 63% of farmers in India get loans from banks. The rest do not. So there's a big gap between those who actually get uh, access to formal credit, 64% uh, get access to formal credit, but 36% are dependent on moneylenders and so on. Also, as long as agriculture remains unviable, rural debt will continue to grow. Most recently, the union budget itself pointed out that the many reasons for why farming is not remunerative includes a heavy dependence on rainfall for irrigation, micro-irrigation projects remain unimplemented because of high initial investment, and the per hectare production of wheat, rice and pulses in India is below world average. And the per capita availability of fresh water has reduced from about 3,000 cubic meters in 1960 to less than 1,100 cubic meters in 2015. Now, there's no better way to understand a complex phenomenon like rural distress and the impact of loan waivers on it than visiting the ground. Manas Pratap Singh travelled to western Uttar Pradesh to meet farmers near Merit. He met farmers for whom the loan waiver will have no impact because they've had to depend on a mix of loans from banks but also from money lenders. Abhi jo aapke 4-5 lakh jo karza hai aap pe, ye pura bank se hi liya hua hai? Na, waisa biyaj pe bhi? Sahukar se bhi leke rakha hua hai, kitna? 3-1 lakh rupay hai. तीन एक लाख साहूकार से भी लेके रखा हुआ है तो वो वो जो वापस करने के लिए क्या करना पड़ेगा आपको वो तो क्योंकि माफ नहीं होगा दो और बेचेंगे कुछ वैसा लोन जैसा आप लोन लिया लोन लेकर उसे दे देंगे आप जैसे और भी लोग हैं यहाँ पे जो साहूकार से लेते हैं बहुत आदमी घने आदमी तो अभी भी यही यहाँ पे भी बैंक से ज्यादा साहूकारों से लिया जा रहा है जब बैंक नहीं देता तो साहूकार सही ले मैं और किससे ले बैंक क्यों नहीं देता अभी भैया ने बताया तुम्हारे नहीं नहीं एक सेकंड एक सेकंड बैंक से क्यों नहीं बैंक क्यों नहीं देते वे भगाओ जाओ उन्हें दलाली कहाँ से दे वे 
वे है एजेंट उन्हें भी पैसा चाहिए एक लाख रुपया मंजूर हुआ एक सेकंड एक सेकंड हाँ एक लाख रुपया मंजूर हुआ कम से कम तीस हजार रुपये तो उन्हें चाहिए जब तो हमें तो सत्तर मिले सत्तर में क्या कर लेंगे अब हमें देना एक लाख ही नाउ Manas also met farmers who had taken bank loans and who welcomed the waiver but said that they see themselves once again slipping into a cycle of debt. Karza kitna hai aap pe? Karza hai 3-4 lakh. 3-4 lakh hai. To 1 lakh tak ka to karza maaf ho jayega lekin jo 3-4 lakh ka hai wo kaise jayega? To aur bekhenge kuch zyada mehnat karenge. To aise ये जो कर्जा है ये कैसे कैसे इकट्ठा हो गया इतना सारा इकट्ठा तो नहीं होगा आमदन नहीं कैसे आप पे आ गया इतना सारा कर्जा आमदन तो कम खर्चे ज्यादा तो नहीं होगा कोई ढोर मर जा है फसल खत्म हो जा है पानी भर जा तो कर्जा तो नहीं होगा उसमें लागत लगाओ आओ हुई हवा फसल नष्ट हो जा तो ऐसा क्या किया जा सकता है अगली बार की अगर इस बार आपका जो कर्जा माफ हो जाएगा उसके बाद अगली बार ऐसा क्या कर, कर करा जा सकता है जिससे कर्जा आप पे ना आपके बोझ ना पड़े ऐसा तो नहीं हो सकता ऐसा हो ही नहीं सकता नहीं आम आदमी तो उतने ही रहेंगे खर्चा बढ़ेगा ही किसान पर क्या तकलीफ सबसे ज्यादा होती है कि खेती में पानी का कोई साधन नहीं होता सूखा में मर जा कभी खेती कभी ओलों में मर जा कभी पानी घना आ जा तो इसलिए किसान पर कर्जा हो जा So in an attempt to understand exactly why farming is so economically precarious Manas asked one of those farmers that we saw to break down exactly how much they spend and how much they earn Hum ye janna cha rahe the ki kheti mein par prati mah aap pe kitna kharcha aa jata hai aur kis kis cheez pe Kheti mein shuru mein to pani dena padega 150 rupaye ghanta ka anjan chal jayega फिर उसके जुताई के नहीं ट्रैक्टर आवेगा साढ़े तीन सौ साढ़े तीन सौ रुपये बीघा उले हुए फिर बीज पड़ेगा उसको पैसे चाहिए फिर डाई चाहिए तो यूरिया चाहिए खर्चे ही खर्चे हैं इसमें तो कितना एक महीने में कितना एक एक महीने में कितना हो जाता है एक महीने में हो जा छः सात हजार रुपये छः सात हजार हो जाता है और आप अगर छः सात हज़ार का मान के चलें बारह महीने का तो साल भर में आपकी कमाई कितनी हो जाती है उस हिसाब से साल भर में हो जाएगी ज़्यादा ज़्यादा एक डेढ़ लाख की एक डेढ़ लाख की तो जितना आपका खर्चा है उतनी ही ऑलमोस्ट आपकी आमदनी हो जाएगी तो आप उसमें कर्जा कैसे वापस करेंगे दौर देखेंगे कुछ मेहनत करेंगे कुछ लोन से लोन लेंगे साहूकार का हम दे देंगे साहूकार से लेकर बैंक का जमा करेंगे और बैंक से लेकर साहूकार को दे देंगे ऐसी अदल बदल करो जाएंगे साहूकार हमारे भैंस कटिया और ले जाएगा ले जाने से पहले ही उसका लौटाना पड़ा है तो समस्या हर चीज की है ना सो ग्राउंड लेवल अरेथमेटिक विच एक्सप्लेन वाई एग्रीकल्चर कंटिन्यूज टू बी अई रिस्क प्रोफेशन वेयर the costs of inputs are so high and the earnings are so less that farmers simply don't make enough and once again plunged into the cycle of debt and that's the question that we're raising tonight about whether farm loan waivers can really be that silver bullet well i uh, spoke a short while ago to siddharth nath singh who's the health minister of uttar pradesh remember the state that kicked off uh, this entire frenzy of farm loan waivers uh, by waiving off that loan uh, i spoke to him in lucknow and uh, I began by asking him that as far as this entire question is concerned of exactly how many farmers is going to benefit from the Uttar Pradesh waiver because the opposition has criticized you Siddharth Nath Singh saying that essentially you said it will be all farmers but what we have is a situation where there are totally 2.3 crore farmers in Uttar Pradesh but according to the state government only 86 lakhs only a third are going to benefit from it there's no confusion there are 2.35 crore uh, farmers in uttar pradesh out of them 2.15 crores are farmers who are small and marginal farmers and those who have taken loan uh, for uh, cultivation so that uh, roughly that's again a estimate 
should be about 20, 87 to 88 lakh farmers. Okay, but uh, that is then according to your own figures only a third of all farmers. That's not all. Well, again, again, uh, well, uh, well, we have to. We are addressing to whom uh, the farmers who have taken the loan. Now there are other schemes which will benefit the farmers who have not taken the loan, and there are many schemes. Unfortunately, Akhilesh Yadav government did not even, uh, you know, p p had a notification which came only in January 2017 regarding the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana. Now you can imagine how much of crop was destroyed because of too much of rains, hailstorm, and other things. But uh, they, they could not uh, take benefit of it. But uh, so other farmers will get a coverage, even if they have not taken a loan from the banks. Okay. Now the other big question, of course, is how are you going to afford it? This is going to cost you upwards of thirty-six thousand crores. UP is already in debt. Isn't this a problem? Well, certainly you can tweak your revenues. You can stop pilferages. I'll give you one example. Today we had another cabinet meeting. Uh, on the mining sector, sec sector which is the sand, uh, the revenue generation has been only 1,650 crores. Now, that is a very abnormal figure, but actually the trade goes down, goes, goes over uh, 40 to 50,000 crores, and this is all illegal. Now, we have already started cracking on this illegal trade and in the cabinet, we brought a notification for, uh, you know, the transportation which needs to be allowed within the state for, uh, for, for and also giving them uh, within 10 acres a uh, mining lease. So, these are the revenues which will be generated and brought uh, to the treasury. Okay. Now, some may argue that it may take months, perhaps years to generate that kind of revenue to be able to underwrite this huge waiver you've given. But let me also ask you the statement made by the RBI chief who said that these waivers undermine an honest credit culture. Well, uh, well there is a, there, I, I don't uh, disagree to a statement made by, I think it was made by the SBI chief, no, not the RBI actually, chief. It was actually but, the RBI chief. Okay. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. That, that's an economist who made a statement. But uh, at the end of the day, you can't leave 70% of the population which is suffering due to the credit they had taken and they can't be brought back into the mainstream. Now, in order to bring, uh, bring them back into the mainstream and then that 70% of the population contributing to the growth of the GDP of the state, you have to take a step. Maybe it's a one time, but you have to provide them. Then and subsequently, irrigation, seeds, warehousing, a lot of things needs to be done. Okay. We will be doing and addressing that in the long term. All right, Siddharth Nath Singh saying that uh, you will be looking at uh, long-term solutions as well. But is that still an open question about whether these farm loans actually will help transform agriculture or whether they're actually just perpetuating a cycle of debt. GVL Narasimha Rao, spokesperson of the BJP, is with us. Thanks very much indeed uh, for listening in. Pawan Khera, spokesperson Congress here in the studio. Devinda Sharma, leading expert on agriculture. Uh, GVL Narasimha Rao, I just want to ask you as a starting point that uh, the idea of the BJP and a farm loan waiver, in fact, I'll put that graphic up on the screen that when your own Minister of State for Agriculture, Purshottam Rupala, was asked in Parliament on November 16th, 2016. He said, there is no such proposal for a farm loan waiver under consideration because the RBI has pointed out to the fiscal risks of such a decision. As a party that broadly believes in the philosophy uh, of the economic right, isn't it surprising for you then to be, uh, currently at least, the leader, the first off the blocks with this massive farm loan waiver in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Srinivasan, I think this is not a, a farm loan waiver was something that was required in Uttar Pradesh in this particular context. But I agree this cannot be a, a sort of a long term or a, this cannot be one cannot take recourse to it uh, repeatedly. This was a sort of a, you can say, a, 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 a distress relieving measure at this point of time. So no but other in the BJP run, state. What we need to do is to. So is no to other ensure. BJP state will then go no, no, for I, a waiver. I, uh, not Maharashtra, not Chhattisgarh. I, it's, all the you're ruling that out. 
No, I think it's entirely up to the state governments. What the minister, minister of state for finance at the center said hmm. is there was no such proposal at the national level because agriculture being a, 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 a being a, a agriculture. I think you don't have uh, these natural calamities occurring in every part of the country. There are some states okay. which suffer on account of drought or other other reasons. Right. And certainly, therefore, measures were to be taken by the respective state governments. But in the long run, what we need to ensure is is the near universal coverage under Prime Minister's crop insurance scheme. Yes. Because Honorable Prime Minister came up with a very, very, very positive scheme, very attractive scheme with a very low premium and a high risk cover. So I think we have to somehow work towards a universal coverage, yes. which will which will completely uh, okay. negate the need for any farm loan waiver in future. Okay, no farm loan waiver in future, you say, just very shortly after announcing a huge waiver. Devinder Sharma, uh, do you think that, uh, that this uh, question of farm loan waiver now, you've seen Uttar Pradesh, other states want to follow suit. As we've heard now, assessment after assessment of the impact of the UPA's loan waiver, is this in the long term counterproductive for farmers? Well, first of all, let me make it very clear that uh, farm loan waiver under the present uh, circumstances is uh, definitely required. And okay. what uh, UP has done is not only good politics, it's also good economics. Okay. Now, it's, and I would definitely like to see other states also following it because agriculture is passing through a terrible distress and uh, the only way to, uh, to really make those people join the mainstream and part, be part of that economic growth we talk about is to first give them a clean slate. And that can be only done if you write off uh, the, the of, uh, farm loans that are pending. The, having said that, I think uh, uh, I listened to you when you were talking about the RBI governor and the SBI chairperson. And it's, you know, it is, in fact, shocking right. that I don't find all these people even standing up and saying when the corporate loans are waived off. You know, and that tells us very clearly that two sets of economics being followed in India. Hmm. One is for the rich and the corporates, and the other one is for the poor and the farmers. So okay. whenever there is something being done for the farmers, there is a hangama in this country. Oh, where will the money come from? And so on and so no, forth. There is enough money in this country, let me tell you very clearly. Okay, Why but let me should ask you state this. be writing off farm loans? Just let me allow uh, say yeah. Srinivas. Yeah. Srinivasan. No, I, I take your point. I take your point. Can See, I my just... Point, my point, Srinivasan, is why should state be underwriting... Why should the state be underwriting, uh, underwriting the bank loans that people have taken? If the corporates, when the corporate loans are written off, no state government is asked to underwrite that. So okay. it's only the banks who write off. So why should the state governments be asked to do that? I don't understand. Okay, let so me ask Bhavan Khera. Let me ask. Followed let, for states of right. should not. Fair states enough. Should refuse to underwrite the bank loans. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you can say that there are double standards at play here, but that still doesn't take away from the fact, Bhavan Khera, that several assessments of the loan waiver you gave in 2008 have been found to have actually been counterproductive to once again very quickly paraphrase what I read out earlier from the World Bank and ICRIA that it actually said it discourages prompt repayment in future in the expectation that there may be more waivers in the pipeline and even borrowers of good standing feel tempted to default. I am sorry, where is our, uh, forget World Bank. Now this is a crisis. Can they I can't repay. Now tell me what do we do? They can't repay. You want them to pull out of uh, agriculture? Give them an alternative. They don't have an alternative. What are we discussing? Now, a painkiller for a tumor. You definitely still need the painkiller. You have to treat the tumor, definitely. Okay. But you definitely, definitely need the painkiller for that man. That's a loan waiver. So, is so you're saying, no, no, but then you're saying by implication, you're saying by, by this whole philosophy of what do we do, so therefore then nobody has to ever pay back a loan because agricultural distress, rural debt I, is ever climbing. Do we ask this question when 140,000 crore of corporate loan is by this government? I'm not, but then it's it's two wrongs, two wrongs don't no, make no, a it's right. Not, two I, wrongs don't I, make a right. Why, why, why do you call this a wrong? We have to address the no, larger crisis in our agriculture. Now the input cost, yeah. just for example, some fertilizers have gone up by 1400%, but your MSP has gone up just by 68%. If you can't balance these two out, right. why are you blaming the poor farmer? Okay, can I get uh, GVL Narsimha Rao uh, to respond to that? That are you not addressing the root causes, GVL Narsimha Rao, that lead to rural debt, to high rural indebtedness, and then instead only focus on doing, uh, you know, the last-minute surgical strike, the loan waiver? No. No, uh, Srinivasan, we are actually, only this government is looking at the systematic problems 
that really affect Indian agriculture. I think we are looking at uh, a Fasal Bhima Yojana right. is, is, is the exactly the always. kind of, I mean, I'm sorry. Why, the kind of a cover, warning? insurance don't, that don't a farmer needs, it to a focus on agriculture, debate, focus on irrigation. Can I, can I, can I just, can I, can I just complete my statement, please? You just keep changing names and then don't, can I, can I, this is not going to help Srinivasan. Please, please talk about issues. This is not going to help. Let him finish, let him finish, let him finish. No, I, no. There were there were several insurance schemes earlier, but then they suffered from serious abnormalities. So One okay. was very we, we high premium rate, mean you and second that, okay, was most of the time claims were not this, paid. Even the and even for, the for God's sake, okay, this okay, government has given a good scheme. Issue which we is, already which have. Is, we already uh, have a 25% okay, coverage. Let's get, let's get, let, let me try to, and let me try to get in the middle of this. universal coverage. Okay, let me try to get in the middle of this and ask Devinder Sharma. Devinder Sharma, as a neutral observer, uh, do you think that governments, whether it's BJP or Congress or anyone, are doing enough to address uh, the root causes of rural debt? Because if you look at the figures, you'll see that in 2007-8, uh, uh, when the UPA gave its loan waiver, uh, it was about 3.38 lakh crore of rural debt. Currently, that figure, 2016 figure, is 12.6 lakh crores. Well, I think let me make it very clear, uh, Shinvasan, that uh, actually what the question that you asked is very important. Successive governments, not only this government, they actually are trying to trying to push farmers out of agriculture. They are creating conditions where farmers are actually impoverished by the state. Let me make it very clear. Last year in 2016 economic survey, it was spelled out very clearly that the average income of a farming family in 17 states of India hmm. is only 20,000 rupees a year. Now, yes. if 20,000 rupees a year is the average income, you yes. know, per year, which means 1,700 rupees per month. So yes. just look at the crisis that is at, that is on hand here. And this is deliberate, deliberate ploy of governments to because they, they no, treat why, agriculture as uh, cheaper labor deliberate? and cheaper food. Farmer have only two roles. No, but why would you, why would you accuse them of, of uh, why would you say deliberate? It could be apathy, it could be incompetence, but surely no, not deliberate. No, well, Okay, let's, let's. Actually, no, give GVL see, a chance to have the last word. No, it is deliberate, uh, Srinivasan. Okay, let him have the last word because it is, no, he is it, you know, the BJP, it is the government of the day. Why I am saying this is... No, but governments are all been, about propaganda. We need to been, question them. There, so there why should he have the last word? I don't understand. There has been a crisis in agriculture, but the, our government has tried to really do the best possible. And certainly this sector has received much greater attention from, from our government than it had received in the past. Okay. Certainly we suffered from two years of consecutive drought, which certainly created uh, okay. a okay. difficult you situation power, you for the agriculture. You but sorry, you, you, you had a problem with this last at, word business. Look at you irrigation. You have the last word, but don't look at, start, look a, at, don't start a full look debate. debate. That's the only no, request. Jai, no, no, quick. Look, at, sorry, look at the urea. When it comes to Look farmers, at the urea subsidy. Hearts, Fertilizer prices have actually gone down. DSP prices have gone down. No. I think we should think of an interest-free loan for these farmers. For God's sake, let them come to a level where they can survive at least. Okay. What are we discussing here? All right. All right. Well, uh, easier said than done uh, because there is a huge gap between the kind of access to institutional credit as we just saw uh, that farmers get versus how much they still depend on moneylenders. So it's a complex subject. We will come back to it. But thank you all gentlemen so much uh, for watching. That's it on Reality Check. Thank you from all of us here. Good night.